Hello, hello. Welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to a Michael Williams. Thank you for your continued support. And I want to dive into some connecting of the scripture that we often cite, you know, throughout this channel and elsewhere. Because, they, they, you know, once we learn how to connect the dots, okay, with narcissistic abuse and then how it's occurring on the societal level and inside the matrix, that narcissistic matrix, we start connecting those dots. We start to be able to see God connection in scripture as well. Okay? Because he, he's telling us where he is, where Jesus is, where the kingdom of God is, and he's telling us, you know, everything that we need to know. Right? Not just about ourselves, but about the spiritual truth. So, one that I often refer to is that John 4, 24, right? And I am reading from, obviously, the KJB. And so, what does God tell us? For those who need this reminder, okay, that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay? So, this is what the narcissistic abusers are not doing. Because part of that, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, is faith, okay, walking and living by faith, not living in fear, okay, in God's reality, in the spiritual awakening, we realize there really isn't anything to fear, we, the enemy is a coward, uh, he throws temper tantrums when he doesn't get his way, right, so there's nothing to be afraid of with the enemy, and this is what the narcissistic abusers want, though, they want us to be afraid of them, all right, and from, look, for all of us, while we were overcoming that, okay, and learning that we have absolutely no reason to walk on eggshells, okay, because that's what they're doing, and they're projecting that outward through their own living in fear, okay, because they, you know, if they're living in fear, then they're not walking and living by faith, trusting God 100% in spirit and in truth, that's right, because after all, uh, these narcissistic abusers, they're pathological liars, just like their master. The devil is a liar. Okay? And then now what does God tell us about the kingdom of God? Yes, that's in Luke 17, 21. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's the mind. And once we realize that... Because, after all, you know, when we get that down pat, that we are in a spiritual battle for the mind. How the enemy wants to get control of our thoughts. Just like the narcissistic abusers want to get control of our uh, behaviors. Try to change us into one of them. Okay, that's the ultimate goal of the enemy right there. Is to try to change us into one of them. Because they can't stand the fact that, hey, chosen ones, you're meant to stand out. Oh, yeah. You're meant to stand out. We're not... No, we're not conforming to this world like they do. Absolutely not. That's another one. You know, about renewing of the mind, okay? So, it's like, all right, we understand that that has to happen. Unlearning all the old ways, what the world tried to teach us and tell us about ourselves. None of it. You know, we, we learn that the opposite of what these narcissistic abusers were trying to tell us about who we are and how we feel and stuff, the opposite is true for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so the kingdom of God is within. It's where all your creativity is. Because we are supposed to be, as I say often, co-creators with our creator. Yes, in God's reality. We co-create our own reality in God's reality. Okay? So, the next one. Okay? So now, it's like many of us when we ask, okay, so where is Jesus? Because it never sat right on our spirit for many of us. That we would see all of those messages being thrown out about, you know, the return of Jesus. People sitting on the edge of their seat waiting for the actual physical return. Because the reality is, when we understand God's spiritual truth, we understand that when Jesus rose, he rose in spirit. Raised a spiritual body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when he was crucified on the cross. That's right. For our the forgiveness of our sins. Okay? Does not not give us permission to keep doing it, though? We have to be in repentance. See, the narcissistic abusers, they think that once saved, always saved. No. 
Because God tells us many times in Scripture that we, that we all have fallen. We still fall short of the glory as we're trying to become more Christ-like. Absolutely. And part of doing that is in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in faith, prove your own selves to you. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And he goes on to say, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but he would say he would not expect us to be reprobates. Once God awakens us and we are raised to that spiritual body, reborn again in Christ. And so now we understand what that means, because when Jesus died on the cross, that's right, it took, oh my goodness, yeah, it made, that, that defeated the devil, right there, bottom line, okay, because we realized that God, Spirit, Jesus, Spirit, Holy Spirit, the Godhead is in us, and that's what he's trying to tell us, and that, and when we are raised to spiritual body, reborn again in Christ, I talk more about that truth over on the Patreon channel, okay, about how that is the second resurrection. Oh, I know, some people, you know what, those of you who understand God's spiritual truth, you know what I'm talking about. Then the next one, because once that happens, when we are raised to spiritual body, reborn again in Christ, that is the spiritual rebirth. Okay? So then we realize Galatians 2.20, what God is telling us, and Jesus, saying that, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It's no longer us who walk, but Christ who walks through us. As we continue to unlearn worldly ways, you know what I'm saying? Unlearn some of that garbage. Relearn how to live our lives again by faith, okay? And, and striving to become more Christ-like every single day. All right, that yeah, it's ongoing in the spiritual battle, and see that's how God will reveal these things, left and right. Oh yeah, yeah. Even when you get to the other side of the rainbow, okay, you get that balance between the spiritual and the physical. God's still gonna reveal stuff. Oh, He does every day for us, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's just the way it is, because He's got to reveal all. Like you know, that one of God's promises. Remember, God is a promise keeper, okay. And so that's that. Then. Because of that, with God and Jesus in spirit, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. That's right. See, the Holy Spirit is a whole lot more than just, you know, one that, you know, that that, that uh, gives us the utterance, okay? A whole lot more than our comforter. He is a whole lot more than, uh, you know, our protector. He's a whole lot more than the, you know, happy, joy, all the good stuff, okay? He's a whole lot more than that. I think big, okay? Because the Holy Spirit also is the one that steps in and tells us when to shut up, <laughs> okay? Oh, well, yeah, the Holy Spirit will step in and tell us no, especially when we think we want to send something to one of the narcs. He says, no. <laughs> we don't reward evil for evil, okay? We overcome evil with good, all right? It's all part of the process. It's all part of the learning and the unlearning and the relearning how to live and develop that God-like patience as we grow and mature. Yes, okay, when we figure out who we are in Christ and what our purpose is, because everybody got a purpose. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, yeah. But the narcs, they sit on it. Oh, yeah. I mean, really. They copy. Okay? They copy. But, chosen one, you're destined to do good. That's the bottom line right there. Because remember also what God tells us there about the renewing of the mind. He's doing that so that we can do that which is acceptable in the perfect will of God. Our purpose. Alright, so that's why that process has to take place. And it's, again, it's different for all of us. Okay? But I wanted to cover those verses. Because they are interconnected. It's like, you know, Jesus spoke in parables. Okay? And God's very strategic. We say that a lot for a reason. Because He is. Like, God knows. That's why we're like, uh-huh, God knows what He's doing. 
Oh, yeah. Of course he does. It's the enemy. <laughs> the enemy who knows what he's dishing out. Oh, yeah, he knows he's dishing out fiery dart. But the enemy doesn't know what he's doing. Like, as far as, really? I mean, we realize that when we look and watch and observe these narcissistic abusers running around like busybodies, trying to be all up in everybody's business, instead of learning how to mind their own business. Okay, yeah, we call that beeswax. Okay, they are extremely nosy. Okay, and so we learn. This is another reason why we learn to move in silence as well. When God puts something on our spirit to do, mm-hmm, yeah, and he brings, yes, like-minded folks across the path. Uh-huh, because God is always going to bring people he already has picked out for your purpose to help you elevate, to level you up. Okay, and they will, because they too, the God spirit in them, sees your potential and wants to elevate it. Like I've said previously, the narcissistic abuser never wanted us to discover all that potential that God put in us. Oh, they see it. They don't know what it is. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't know what it is. They can't. Because, well, we didn't even know what it was until God revealed it to us. Okay, that's, just, that's how God works. And so he does that when he knows we're ready. But he'll introduce us to it. Yes, y'all, during the healing process. He will introduce us to parts of our calling. That's how God works. He introduces us into our new life with Christ. Yes, how beautiful is that? Like I talked about before when I took the very first business trip and I asked the Heavenly Father to help y'all put it in perspective. And I was thinking, I was thinking that, okay, maybe this will be the last trip I need to take before I can, and, and, and God stepped in, the Holy Spirit stepped in and said, um, you're a ministry. You're going to have to travel. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> so, I how God was introducing me. He's introducing me to that. Okay? So, there you go. Introducing me to that new life with Christ. You know, getting out there and, and visiting and, and just, you know, people got to know we're here. All right? So, it's just another form of advertising. Right, because of the work that we're doing. Okay? It really, all of that, as far as the traveling and things like that, that is going to depend on what our calling is. Okay? So, obviously, because we are a ministry helping people heal okay, from narcissistic abuse and trauma okay, recovery, you know, with God's wisdom, that ministry. So, we got, we got to travel. Because, let's face it, you know, not all survivors are going to be on the same platform that we're on. They'll eventually find us, because that's when God brings, uh-huh. Because, yeah, the enemy's trying to suppress, yep, the work we're doing. The enemy tried to suppress it, but God's like, mm, no. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit steps in and says, hey, you know what? You know, they, they, like, they like what we're doing because they've identified that there's an audience. Well, we knew that. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody's traumatized. It's a matter of healing from that and getting out from under the myth that it's not possible to heal from trauma. It is 100% possible. All right? We say that a lot for a reason. I don't want y'all to get duped by the enemy into thinking that you will not ever heal fully because you will. All right? That's why it's not for the faint at heart. Okay? Because that's why we got to keep on keeping on. And then God is going to send people, you know, for to network with us and get us where he needs us to be. And that also means where we should have already been. However, it is still on God's time. Yes, yeah, a little nuance there. All right? But that's why God hastens it on his time. Okay? Because he's going to get us where he had planned for us to be at a certain point in our lives. God had it all planned out. So, for example, you know, being, you know, uh, <laughs> in my early 40s when... All of this started taking off, okay? And then how God just hastened it on his time to get me where he needs me to be. And that's ongoing, you all. Oh, yeah. That's why I say the spiritual awakening is ongoing, okay? And and the, the learning and the relearning and the unlearning and all that a constant process. I know because we all had to get rid of years of that programming, years of the uh, lies and the deceit, the world trying to tell us who we are. And what we're supposed to do with this. What we're supposed to do with that. Oh, and that we won't amount to anything. Or blah, blah, blah. All that negative stuff they tried to tell us about ourselves. 
And then we realized that, you know what, the opposite is true. Like I said there at the beginning, we realized that the opposite of what they tell us is the truth. Mm, that discernment, okay, and being able to take what the enemy dishes out, flipping it, just like God does. God guides our steps in doing that. Yeah, because that's how we're able to continue to see the positives and everything, regardless of what the enemy tries to do. It's not going to work. All right, everyone? So, real quick recap for you, if you want to go ahead and jot this down, if you haven't already, the John 4, 24, Luke 17, 21, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, Galatians 2, 20, and then John 14, 26. All right, as always, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me for additional information, insight, and other good stuff. Check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Till next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.